Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here, of course, with Geography. Now we're on to Serbia. Yes, Serbia. I know where you guys are located and all that fun stuff, but other than that, don't know a whole lot. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> we're going to jump right into this, guys, and check you guys out. I'm sure you guys will have some awesome things to offer, and this will be fun. But anyways, guys, please hit that like and subscribe button below. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. And let's do it full screen. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. Three, two, one, bam. All right, out of all my subscribers, I think the ones that have been the most patient have been the Serbians. Ever since I made the Albania episode and had the pleasant experience of realizing the ramifications of making any kind of content pertaining to the Balkan subregion, Serbians have been emailing me for years wanting to help with the Serbia episode. <laughs> and I, I get it, Serbia has quite a polarized reputation in Europe. It's kind of like, <laughs> hey, show him some respect. Do you remember what happened in the 90s? Yeah, I do. He was very cordial and polite. He was not cordial to me. I like yogurt. Oh, hush. I'll Albania, Serbia's cool, plus Hoja was like 10 times worse than anything the Serbs did to you. You helped Hoja at one time. Yeah, but then you ditched us for China and that didn't even last and you were left isolated. I mean, he did kind of kill our Archduke starting World War One, but you know, teaming up with the Austrians was kind of weird to begin with anyway, so. Actually, that was a Bosnian Serb from our side, but basically the same thing. Huh, Serb, Talica, right. Oh yeah, great band. Yeah, quite a reputation. <laughs> I'm definitely curious now. What happened? Plus, what happened in the '90s? I feel so out of touch. All these countries know what's going on, and I don't. <laughs> but obviously, we're gonna. We got like 27 minutes here, guys. So I'm sure I'll get up to date here soon. <laughs> it's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. So as you know, I love having real people from the countries we cover in these videos. And with that, say hi to my friend, Ivan. Zdravo, brate. Hey, you know, fun Woo. fact, we actually went to high school. We didn't hang out at all. Not at all. <laughs> then we bump into each other like, what, 10 years later, 15 years 15 later? 15 years later. And uh, he yeah. remembered that I was Serbian. And he said, guess what? I'm doing a video on Serbia. Do you want to be in it? And I was like, Sure. Ivan, explain. Who are you? What are you? Both my parents are from Belgrade, and uh, I have my dual citizenship. And you're fluent, right? You speak it? I do, I do. Uh, All right, Ivan, you ready for this episode? Yes, I am. It's like we're walking into a death trap. Yeah, I'm Serbian. <laughs> That's what we do. So get ready. We're going to serve you up a great new episode. <laughs> I can already tell this is definitely going to be a controversial episode. <laughs> and... I can imagine like the comments, you know, where apparently something's not right here, <laughs> or, he's, he, or he has some wrong information. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. All right, we barely started the episode and already we're gonna jump into the most controversial part of the video, Serbia's domain. Almost none of it makes sense and everyone just gets mad. Eh, I don't know, I made the Israel and North Korea episodes. Uh, we can probably handle this. <laughs> Uh, First of all, the country is landlocked in the heart of the South European region known as the Balkans. The country is divided into 29 districts with the capital and largest city, Belgrade, located in the upper central part of the country, right on the Danube River. This is where you can find the largest and busiest airport, Nikola Tesla International. The second largest and busiest airport, though, is actually in the third largest city, Niš, Constantine the Great International, located in the southeastern part of the country. Roadways traverse every section of the country, the busiest highway being the A1. Railways are everywhere as well, divided into main lines and branch lines. Now, Serbia has a lot of territorial anomalies. If you look at the Danube River border with Croatia, you will see the river has shifted flow directions numerous times over the decades, which creates newly formed mini Penne Enclave River islands, the most contested wow. ones being Sharingrad and Vukovar. Some islands are technically not even claimed by either side, which certain cheeky individuals see as an opportunity to jump in and claim for themselves as founders of a new micronation, like what happened with Siga Island and this Czech guy that came in and made his own country called Liberland. Later, Croatian authorities came and kicked him out. From there, you have pretty much the same situation on the Drina River border with Bosnia and Herzegovina. Speaking of which, in the southwest part of the country, you have the pterodactyl-looking panhandle near Mistrar that is only accessible by one narrow roadway. And a little further off, you have the Medurice Sastavci Bosnian enclave, but it's inhabited by Bosnian Serbs, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I told you, not easy. Not easy. Now, here's where things get a little interesting. The 29 districts are kind of separated into three provinces made up of five statistical regions. The northern districts are collectively known as Vojvodina, 
and this area has a level of autonomy, as it is the most diverse part of Serbia with six official languages and about a third wow. of the population comes from 26 different ethnic groups. They have their own government assembly in Novi Sad, the second largest city, and maintain their own infrastructure, science, education, and culture laws. From there you have the central Serbia area, which has three other statistical regions, Belgrade, Shumadia, and western Serbia, and southern and eastern Serbia. And now folks, here's the really complicated part. You've all been waiting for it. If you ask the Serbian government and many Serbians, they will consider this last area as part of Serbia, known to them as Kosovo and Metohija. Kosovo, which comes from the Serbian word for blackbird, and Metohija from Greek meaning land of monasteries. The thing is, this area is about 90% ethnically Albanian, and after the fall of Yugoslavia, this area has been a hotbed of secessionist movement and controversy. And Serbian law on paper treats Kosovo as another part of Serbia. After the Kosovo War in 1999, the UN Security Council established Resolution 1244, which temporarily put Kosovo under interim administration under the UN, but technically placed Kosovo's status as a meaningful, autonomous, and self-administering region of Serbia's claim until all parties could agree on a resolution to move forward. The problem is, decades later, there have been no resolutions made. Legislatively, Serbia has almost no rule or influence on the area, and in 2008, Kosovo declared independence, but the Serbian government did not recognize it. It was even taken to the International Court of Justice, which ruled the declaration. So Kosovo does everything by themselves. They have, you know, the rest of Serbia doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't affect them whatsoever when it comes to how they run that part, uh, how the, how Kosovo is run. So it's basically like its own country then, right? Because the rest of Serbia has no influence on it, pretty much what they're saying. But, you know, so they want to be their own country, but then, you know, the rest of Serbia is like, no, you're ours, pretty much, right? Wow as not violating international law. Today, there is still a divided response from the international community. The recognition numbers tend to fluctuate over the years, some joining, some withdrawing. But as of 2020, there are officially 97 countries that recognize Kosovo as a sovereign state, about half of the UN countries. However, to be admitted into the UN, you need a two-thirds majority vote. And if any of the main five nations veto, then the state in question cannot be approved. In this case, Russia and China have exercised their veto power. So yeah, that's that. Explaining how things got this way will take for... That's interesting in itself. The, so basically, you need two thirds of UN uh, approval to become your own country. So, okay. Now, I didn't even know any of this. So, just that kind of information is kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, I understand when, you know, how they said this, you know, it's going to be pretty controversial because uh, I'm afraid to ask this question. So, people in Serbia, do you consider it part of your country? Do you want. Do you think it should stay? Do you think it should go? You know, let me know. <laughs> oh, God. Ever. But long story short, you have to go back to Yugoslavia. All the Slavic states of the Balkans, except for Bulgaria, were all a part of the former nation known as Yugoslavia. You've probably heard of it. Now, at the turn of the 20th century, Serbians and Albanians were about equal in population in the Kosovo Metohian region. But during Tito years, it was like, well, we lost a ton of men from those wars, and the mineral and coal mines aren't going to extract themselves. We need a cheap labor force. I'll just bring in some more Albanians. And from there, the Albanian population grew even more and by the end of the century made up over 90%. In Yugoslav Republic times, all the ethnic groups got along relatively well and at some point really did function like a pan-Slavic unit. In the last years though, it was kind of like, Comparatively, life is all right. I mean, we have basic life necessities, subsidized Medicare, and school is not bad. Hey, did you hear Tito died? I'm bringing back the motherland. Trumpst, which new countries ceded and became independent within the following years. So, of course, as they were witnessing that, Kosovo tried to jump in and it was like... I mean, look, Croatia, Slovenia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, I mean, they all did it, why can't I? Because, dude, you have always been an integral part of Serbia. It was the birthplace of our orthodoxy, a key part to the Serbian identity. Our most sacred monasteries and churches are there. Well, if you love the land so much, why did you sell so much of it to us Albanians and deliberately bring us in? Plus, Albanians have inhabited the Balkan Peninsula for millennia too. You're not the only ones. Are you, are you seriously gonna go back to that Illyrian thing again? Uh, yeah I am because we are descended from the Illyrians. That was just a theory and a weakly supported one. And even if you were descended from them, they live mostly on the Dalmatian coast on the Adriatic. Well, where do you think we came from? We didn't just pop up out of nowhere. And even so, it still predates the Slavic migration period. Within the Balkans as a whole, maybe yes. But within the Kosovo subregion, <laughs> not a chance. Okay, you, oh my God. Okay, you know what? Everybody 
he's breaking away. Guess I'm. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna do no, it. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, yes I am. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you and yeah, we just did that skit. For what it's worth, I wrote that skit based off of things that you guys, <laughs> the Serbian and Kosovo Albanian. So okay, basically, you go Kosovo. They want to be their own country, and you know, the, but there's a lot of history there with Kosovo, and they, there's a lot of like, I guess, landmarks and you know, it's religious stuff there. So the rest of Serbia wants that to be, you know, theirs. They want that to be counted as part of their country because they have a bunch of cool stuff there in Kosovo. So, yeah, they, they don't want them to leave. And Kosovo's like, why? It's ours. You guys don't want anything to do with us. You guys don't help us. Let us leave. Yeah, I can definitely see why it's definitely a controversial subject. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get some dislikes on this video. Me and Jaja Peeps gave me information. I wrote it off of that, so it's your fault. All right, well, so today's day and age, Serbs live in isolated pockets throughout Kosovo as minorities. I actually got an email from Jaja Peeps Tamara, who is an anomaly. She's actually half Serbian, half Albanian. She goes to Kosovo all the time. Here's her explaining the experience. Hi, Jaja Peeps. I'm Tamara from Serbia. Actually, I'm 50% Albanian because my father is Albanian and I have been to both sides. People, normal people that are not involved in politics and war stuff. They're trying to move forward. I pretty much felt welcome. I spoke only Serbian because that is my native language and I don't speak any word of Albanian, unfortunately. They were like, wow, you're from Belgrade. Wow, say hello to Belgrade. I used to live in Belgrade, etc." As long as we are normal and as, as long as we speak normally to between each other, there will be no problems. People are trying to live normally. I'm that all. Thanks, Tamara. Well, that's enough for now. Some notable sites of interest you might want to. I feel that's kind of anywhere you go. Like if you go to a different country or whatnot, as long as you, you know, everyone just treats each other with respect, then I think everyone gets along. You know, you go to a different country. I mean, you respect their, you know, the way they live and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm sure everyone's cool with you, but I'm sure it's just like anything else in relationships with friends. Once you bring up religion, you bring up politics, then, you know, then you never know what's going to happen. I mean, because a lot of people take that stuff differently. A lot of people are just very emotional about it. And, you know, I I like to debate. I, I like to talk about it, you know, as long as people are kind of open minded and like, you know, talk about that kind of stuff and it doesn't result to name calling and yelling and screaming. Then I think it's cool, fun stuff to talk about politics and religion. But, you know, you, I guess you kind of have to get like the right people together to talk about that because a lot of people are very defensive and yeah. But yeah, if you're not, if you, if you don't talk about politics and religion with any, usually anybody around the world, you can usually have some cool conversations. So yeah, definitely take away, definitely stay away from those two subjects. But yeah check out if you go to Serbia include Petrovardin Fortress, the Skull Tower of Niš, the Nikola Tesla Museum, the Krupaj Spring, Drvengrad Timber Village, these ruins, ruins of the Yugoslav oh. Army Headquarters, Tito's Grave, Drina River Rock House, and probably the most iconic landmark of Serbia, the Church of St. Sava. Oh, and uh, also, Ivan, you were talking about Splavs. What are those? Splavovi. Splavovi are pretty much river clubs, nightclubs. If you ever go to Serbia, be sure to check them out, and they're all on the rivers. Oh, and speaking of water, what? that brings us to the next segment. The okay, so my tour of Europe, if I do go through you know Serbia, I'll definitely stop and go to a club there. Uh, that seems like a fun time. I mean, as, as long as you don't get drunk and fall into the water, right? But yeah, you, know, you guys must know how to have a good time. You got clubs in the water. <laughs> Okay, here's the easy part of the episode, I guess, right? I mean, we're just gonna talk about land, resources, wildlife, there you go, and so right? on. You can't really argue about that, right? Oh, I'm sure we can find something to argue about. <laughs> First of all, Serbia lies right at the crossroads of Central Europe and the Balkan Peninsula. Essentially, there are two main topographic regions, the flat Pannonian Basin in the north half, which is basically this entire plain surrounded by a bowl-shaped perimeter. This is the flattest part of the country and with the most fertile land where the majority of agriculture can be found. From there, the south part of the country is made up of minor mountain chains, Kopal Alnik, Zlatibor, Serbian Carpathians, and Balkan Mountains, which is where you can also find the tallest point within non-disputed Serbia, Mijor, at about 2200 meters high, which is split between them and Bulgaria. However, if you are a person that stands on the Serbia side of the Kosovo dispute, then you would probably say the Lika Rudoka, or as the Albanians call it, Maya Enjeriut, in the far south is the highest peak at over 2600 meters. Yeah, there you go. We found something you could argue about. <laughs> I told you we would. This mountainous <laughs> area harbors the largest forest zones, national parks, and forest reserves, as well as K 
caves and car systems in Serbia, including the largest cave open to the public, Resava Cave near Yelovac, or the oddly shaped Devil's Town, the Voljavaros Rock Formation, with weird capped spires created by volcanic activity a long Whoa. time ago. The country has a ton of rivers, almost all of which drain into the mighty Danube, the longest river and the largest river that makes up part of the border with Croatia and Romania. The longest river fully within Serbia, though, would be the Morava, which flows northward from the southern highlands. Due to the configuration of the terrain, Serbia doesn't have many large natural lakes, the largest being Vlasina in the south, which is technically a semi-man-made reservoir, only about 10 kilometers long. The largest man-made lake, though, would be the Iron Gates, which is essentially a reservoir created by the Iron Gate dams that serve power to both Serbia and Romania. The country is subject to occasional seismic activity, mostly in the south, with mild earthquakes usually reaching no higher than six on the Richter scale. That's about it for the natural side of things, and there's so much more that goes on into it. Yeah, and with that, it's time for our triple shot of espresso break from this Geography Now mug, more of which you can get at geographynow.com. Serbians do love coffee. Yeah. See, he knows me already so well. Noah, take it away. All right, let's get to it, shall we? As far as natural landscape, Serbia has lots of intriguing hidden gems, such as the Ubats Gorge and river that twists into sharp hairpin turns. The Tisa Whoa. River has that cool phenomenon in which mayflower insects come to mate for one day and die. For what it's worth though, Serbia is an agricultural powerhouse. The abundance of rivers and fresh water make over two thirds of the country arable, and about a sixth of the population is involved in farming. They are today the third largest producers of raspberries in the world after Russia and Mexico, and the third largest plum producer after China and Romania. Today, their economy is more heavily centered around energy, machinery mining, and industry, mostly in the automotive parts sector, which alone makes up about a fifth of all export earnings. The country has notable reserves of oil, gas, and the fifth largest known deposits of coal. Tourism has been relatively more difficult for them compared to other European countries. But with cheap prices and countless places to check out, Serbia has been voted the number one emerging travel destination in Europe. Some hot spots are the remote nature reserves and outdoors. And with that, here's our animal correspondent, Gary Harlow. We're doing this or what? Oh, that would have been sick. Gary Harlow here! <laughs> in Serbia, for one, Serbia has five national parks, ten nature parks, and 72 natural reserves. The mountainous regions are home to many of the 90 plus species of mammals, like voles, otters, badgers, grey wolves, Eurasian lynx, and brown bears. 380 species of birds can be found here as well. Species like storm pestrels, egrets, storks, otters, Osprey, griffin, vultures, and the national animal, the European eagle. Fun fact, the country has over 30 species of bats alone. Many say have played a role in creating the legends of vampires, which also Orlando bloomed here, which also originated here in Serbia as well. Well, that's all for me. Thanks, Caleb. I mean, <laughs> Gary, whatever. Moving on. All right, time to end this segment as we always do food. <laughs> Serbia follows the Balkan style of cuisine, so a lot of the food we are about to mention can be found in other countries around Serbia, but with their own versions or twists on them. Some of the dishes you guys suggest to be mentioned include things like, this is where we gotta get out of the uh, pronunciations, but alas, you do not have to read anything that's in parentheses. Pachenye, wedding cabbage stew, Ivar, white bean soup, Gibanitsa, Serbian style pork rinds, barbecue meat stew. Mm. There's a lot of Turkish influenced foods that came in from Ottoman times like Sarma or Austro-Hungarian influenced dishes like Krofen, two of which are actually probably considered the national dishes. Oh, it's dishes, good. Dishes. Chabapi and Kara Dorjaba schnitzels. And don't forget the most important thing, a shot of rakia, something probable to unite all South Slavs and they all love it. It's Speaking of the Slavic culture, yeah. that brings us to... Thank you, Noah. Yeah, rakia. The best kind is never bought. It's always homemade, right? Domacha. That's how you say homemade. It's domacha. And that is true. It was actually also used for medicinal purposes. They would rub it on my chest like a vapor rub. And speaking of culture, I asked some of you guys, the Serbian jogger peeps, to explain what it means to be Serbian. And here are some of the things you guys said. Serbia. I am loud. I am proud. I am a lot of the time Serbian consider themselves to be misunderstood. Serbians are Slavic people, but 
very influenced by the peoples who lived on the Balkan Peninsula before. We are considered to be the terrorists, vampires, but actually the truth is that we are maybe amongst the most hospitable people in the world. Actually, we really, really, really love to party and really, really love to drink, of course. In Serbia, like, we really, really love sarcasm and almost all our jokes are sarcastic. Um, basically, one of the most important traits of Serbia people and it's called inat so there is no quite good translation for this word like a trait that makes you do or not do something just in order to prove something in despite of something about inat inat is something deep inside our blood for example you cannot climb that tree uh, you ain't gonna tell me what to do i will climb the, climb that tree right away and you just watch me serbians are great people and i say this directly to the serbian people i wish that the serbian people are more united with each other thanks guys in any case here's the demographic breakdown the country has about 7.1 is he referring to like he wants them more united uh, you know, Kosovo, like that kind of thing, where they want them to kind of reunite with them, or is it just, you know, people in general, you know? Just curious. One million people. Not Thanks, guys. In any case, here's the demographic breakdown. The country has about 7.1 million people, not including the disputed area of Kosovo, which has about 1.8 million, and has one of the highest aging populations with an average age of 43 years old, and about one-fifth of all households consist of only one person. The country is made up primarily of ethnic Serbs at about 83%. From there, not including the Kosovo population, the second largest group would be Hungarians at about 3.5%, the Romani at 2%, and the rest are an influx of various other people groups like the Slovaks, Czechs, Croatians, Croatians, Ruthenians, Romanians, most of whom live in the North Vojvodina province. In Serbia, they use the Serbian dinar as their currency. This is what they look like. Cool, money, money, we like making it rain. Whoa. Anyways, they use the type C and F plug outlets and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, of course, the official language of Serbia is Serbian. Serbia. Which, if you didn't know, is basically the same language as Croatian and Bosnian and Montenegrin, but they all swear they're all different languages. We already explained this in the Bosnian Herzegovina episode. Another huge part of the Serbian identity would be the Orthodox Church. Every Everyone respects it. The majority of Serbians identify as Orthodox, even if they're not particularly religious and they carry the crosses, it's just something they cling to for their roots. Every family has their own saint and they celebrate Saints Day or Slava, huge deal. Also, uh, what was that thing you did before? What is this thing? It's the Serbian three finger salute. Very big in Serbia. The, like the Croatians, Bosnians, Slovenians, and the rest, they are all just Slavs. So why are they such a dysfunctional family? That would take ages to explain, but it kind of <laughs> goes like, all right, my fellow Balkan Slavs, how we doing? You guys are always like the expansionist military military power that lords over us in the name of pan-slavism when we didn't ask for it. And the moment one of us expresses even a slight sense of nationalism, you freak out and send in the tanks. Yeah, you're one to talk. Excuse me? Yeah, remember we were allied against Serbia, but then you totally backstabbed me in 93? You backstabbed me. I had like twice as many casualties from your attacks, all because you wouldn't let us use a gas station. You guys are just embarrassing to be around. Shut the f*** <laughs> up, Slovenia, you snobby <laughs> wine-drinking, bank-liquidating client capital losing Latin wannabe. Yeah, I said it. Really, oh North Macedonia? God. I'm not even technically part of this mess, but you know you're basically just confused Bulgarians. I swear, if you f***ing say that one more time, and if anything, how come nobody talks about that 30-year-long dictatorship in Montenegro? Huh? Guys, seriously. Okay, yeah, I admit it. I'm a little bit passionate sometimes. People sometimes can skew it as aggressive. Oh, understatement. Maybe it's because I just wanted to hold on to and protect what we all started with. We were all just South Slavs, but history messed everything up. And maybe I like to romanticize the concept of pan-Slavism and I take it to the extreme sometimes. Understatement. Take it how you will. Ultimately, my underlying objective has always been that I didn't want us to separate too much. Is that so bad? <laughs> Jivoli. Jivoli. Yep. I guess that kind of explains the Kosovo thing, right? There you go. Well, no easy way to smoothly segue, so on a lighter note, let's talk about sports. Here's Art with the sports part. What's up, guys? It's Art. I'm up in Washington State. This is where I'm from. Came up here to see my family. I'll be back soon, so uh, let's get into it. What's up, guys? We are back in my mom's garden, and there's like lots of construction and dogs and like everything going on, so I'm sorry uh, for the background noise. It annoys me too. <laughs> so, in Serbia, athletes are some of the biggest investments of the country, and many have risen to international stardom. For one, the most popular sport is actually basketball, and uh, water polo would probably come in second. They are tied with 
the U.S. with the most world basketball championships with five wins each. And their men's nice. water polo team is normally ranked first or second in the world, tied with Hungary. Volleyball is huge, too. Their men's team are Olympic gold medalists, and women's teams are 2018 world champions and three-time European champions. And finally, tennis has seen some immense growth in popularity with the recent success of players like first-ranked women's champ Yelena Jankovic with 15 WTA single titles. And of course, the big guy everybody's heard of, world's number one men's single player, 17 Grand Slam champion, Novak Djokovic. Guys, I'm not Serbian, all right? Just give me a break. He's won so many titles in all of the major tennis open events, is the first male to win all nine Masters thousand tournaments. He's been on countless talk shows, can speak about five or six languages fluently, and has donated millions of dollars to charity. He is quite the charmer sounds like a really cool dude but you know what's not cool is that construction in the background and if they don't stop i'm gonna go somebody up right now all right back to you barbs thank you art now moving on serbia is a land of extreme tradition customs and radiant celebration lots of stuff happened here so with that here's random hannah with culture stuff <laughs> To this day, beautiful Byzantine-era Orthodox frescoes are some of the most prized artworks and relics of their past. Serbian weddings usually last days, followed by a ton of traditions, such as shooting the apple, drinking from the buklia, smashing plates and glasses. Often, the best man and maid of honor take on godparent roles for future children. In many celebrations, of course you might find the traditional clothing worn amongst men and women. Regions have different styles, but generally you'll see the women's yellow vest on shirts with pleated wool skirts and embroidered aprons. For men, you'll see long shirts, wide pants, a gunya vest topped off with the shikacha cap. Like many of their Balkan cousins, Serbia is riddled with folklore, superstitions, and rituals. For example, Serbian moms will often chastise anyone in the house that leaves two windows open, creating the promaya or cold draft. That is a powerful breeze. It is considered wow. bad luck to put any bag on the floor, especially a purse. Don't sit on the corner of a table, otherwise it is said you will not get married. The Orthodox faith often uses the Julian calendar, meaning that for them, Christmas lies on January 7th. Loud church bells, firing guns in the air, eating off the Christmas bread. They even burn their Christmas trees, or more like Christmas oak branches, and the better they burn, the more luck you will have. We do that now. Wow. Family. Yeah, we burn our Christmas trees. Put it in the, like, your outside fire pit. We don't think it gives you good luck. It's just fun. <laughs> Serbian I mean, doesn't a lot of people do that? I mean, after Christmas, burn your tree. It makes sense. I mean, I don't think that's really unusual. I mean, I guess burn it the day before Christmas. I guess that would be kind of different. Christmas is quite a spectacle of sights and sounds. And speaking of sound, now we go to Keith's terrible music segment. Remember, buy this face at geographynow.com. I'll, I'll, I'll let people see my beautiful green eyes. Much of the traditional Serbian music is rooted in orthodox acoustic choir vocals. Some of the traditional instruments include things like these things, and probably the most well-known traditional instrument, the gusle. Usually these songs are accompanied by the various types of Serbian traditional dance, the most commonly known one being the kolo. Based on a simple one-two rhythm, but some other variants have more complex seven eight rhythms. To basically explain it to you in a very simple way, I drew this really crappy drawing of what it would look like on sheet music. You can count it as one, two, one, two, one, two, three, because you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you got two and two and three, and that makes seven, right? Simple math, math. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, it's all that damn yogurt. All right, in contemporary music, this dude is considered the founder of modern Serbian music. Since then, there has been a really interesting evolution that mixes traditional music with modern music. In fact, you can find it played at the Gucha Trumpet Music Festival, the second largest music festival in all of Serbia. The other being the Modern Exit Festival. In fact, Serbia even won the Eurovision Song Contest in 2007. Whoa. Serbians also are pioneers of ex yugoslavic rock bands and turbo folk as described by geography Radosh, folk music on cocaine. And also, I highly recommend you all to check out David Maximicic. He is a wonderful human being. What bands from Serbia do you know? All right, thank you all. Wow. 
Thank you, Keith. And with that, here's the briefly condensed history segment. All those Greek, Macedonian, Roman, and Byzantine Empire things that predated the Slavs. The Great Slavic Migration in the seventh century. This dude is the first Serbian ruler. Christianity comes in. East, West schism. Serbs choose Orthodox. Lots of new kings, random battles. Ottomans invade. Centuries of small domestic conflicts. Russo-Turkish war. Serbian kingdom reestablished. Balkan wars. World War I, Austria-Hungary pissed. World War II, Germany goes ham on them. Yugoslavia established. Decades of Yugoslavia Slav awkwardness, but it kind of worked sometimes. Dissolution of Yugoslavia! Kosovo War. Montenegro secedes. Country works on trying to stay afloat during underlying controversies by making an image of being the party capital of Europe. And here we are today. Some of the top notable people from Serbia or of Serbian descent that you guys suggested we mention in this episode include too many former kings and royal family members, a bunch of other historical figures like these, scientists and academics like these, and most of all, Nikola Tesla. Nikola Whoa. Tesla is Serbian. He is he Croatian. Is, no, Croatian. 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 Croatian, Croatian, He's Croatian, ours. Croatian. We He's claim Croatian. him. No. <laughs> So many actors and artists like these. One of the most notable ones being Carl Malden. And also there's that lady who survived like the highest fall from an airplane and survived. Fun fact, did oh, you yeah. know James Bond was based on a Serbian guy? Anybody else we're missing? There is my 95 year old grandfather who still is painting in Petr Mladenovic. Oh yeah, a lot of famous Serbs all over the world. And speaking of international affairs, that brings us to... Now it's been said that during Cold War times, Tito was the only man on earth that successfully danced between both sides of the Cold War. Today outside of Europe, the USA, Canada, Argentina, and Australia have the largest populations of Serbs in diaspora. Many moved during Yugoslav breakup times, the largest community living in Chicago, Illinois, USA, which is interesting considering that the US was heavily involved in the NATO intervention of the Kosovo War. Nonetheless, the countries try their best to remain cordial. Now of course, this means that Russia and China have been close as both stand on the Serbian side of the Kosovo conflict. China offers huge business and investment support, and Russia, as a fellow Orthodox and Slavic country, has always had a soft spot for the Serbs. They helped refugees during the Ottoman times, and even gave them land in imperial territory of what is now Ukraine, called New Serbia and Slavo Serbia. In Africa, South Africa is probably the closest friend as many South African resistance fighters trained in Serbia during the apartheid years, and today about 20,000 Serbs live in South Africa, mostly in Johannesburg. Nelson Mandela was even made an honorary citizen of Belgrade. Closer to home though, because of historical controversy, Croatia and Bosnia are on paper enemies. But in reality today, when people from these countries meet, it's like everything drops and they're just Balkan Slavs. The only difference is the religious background and maybe a few minor cultural differences, but otherwise they get each other. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Serbians have told us two countries, Montenegro and Greece. For Montenegro, it is often said the two are two eyes in the same head. They share lots of history, they saved each other many times in wars, lots of people intermarry and have property or businesses in both countries. And even though Montenegro is pushing a separation from Serbian identity movement, they can't deny the closeness they share. For Greece, not only do they share the Orthodox thing, but they've always kind of helped each other in history, whether it was against the Ottomans or Greece being the only NATO country to refuse cooperation in the Kosovo dispute standing with Serbia. Today, most Serbs go to Greece all the time for vacations where they are welcomed with open arms. They share the same laid back dark humor. And when they meet, it's like an instant connection of powerful Aww. Balkan bond few nations in the world can understand. And for the conclusion, I think, uh, Yvonne, you should take uh, it away. Whoop. Centuries of dramatic- Makes sense, right? Just, I just finished the, uh, or basically, yeah, I just finished the, uh, was it Italian-Greece war, you know, of World War II, the war, and, you know, Serbia's in there, and, they, you know, they were basically just trying to help, uh, Greece, so that was kind of cool. It's kind of interesting how that kind of played into having Serbia now. I don't know. I don't think any of that made sense, but anyways, go check out that video, <laughs> the, the series. Events have led to the Serbia today that is stuck in between moving forward with one hand grasping to the glory days of the medieval Serbian kingdoms that are a frequent source of inspiration. So many things that have happened yet nobody gets a full answer and nobody fully wins anything. In the end, we're just a group of South Slavs. That's all we can say. We are Serbs. Jivoli. Jivoli. Stay tuned. Say shell. It's coming up next. Mm. Not X. <laughs> no, it's over. That's why they call it jet fuel. So I guess that stuff doesn't go down real easy. Or do you or do you always like to mix it? I don't know. Okay, here we go. Serbia, definitely a definitely you know, because I seen a comment before this video saying <laughs> this is something about uh, you know where it made me think of you know it's gonna be controversial. And yeah, it definitely was. Uh so yeah, well, Serbia definitely 
a great group apparently to party with because they apparently they love to drink and have a good time and obviously by the clubs and everything and they say it themselves and seem like you know very sarcastic fun group apparently so and apparently pair very friendly as well you know just don't talk about the political stuff and i think everyone's cool and gets along and everyone's like best friends right so yeah so there you have it guys please hit that like and subscribe button let me know your thoughts about anything going on in this video below you know i know it's probably me expecting some negative comments or but you know i'm always interested to see what other people's point of view are and how they view things so it did don't be shy to comment just you know be respectful you know in the comments you know so anyways guys like subscribe and all that fun stuff and cool stuff guys have a great night peace catch you guys in future videos doing every country in the world hope you guys can stay around and check things out and got a whole lot of playlists going on you know past playlists so definitely check out those of different wars i've done it's definitely cool stuff interesting stuff so anyways i'm out of here guys have a good night i'm out